Book of the Week, Legacy by James Kerr. Welcome everybody, it's Jason Barlow, RMT. I'm here as your therapist and as your coach to help you transform your stress, your tension, and your pain into health, happiness, and vitality. So every Friday I share with you my favorite book of the week. This could go on for quite some time. I love to read and I love to continue to expand my knowledge base and share this information with you. And each week what I try to do is share how these particular books tie in with your pursuit of health, happiness, and vitality. This week's book is centered around the legacy itself of the New Zealand All Black, historically known as the most winningest team in all of sports. They win 86% of the time. That's quite a record, and it's quite a record to try and surpass and top. So what this gentleman, James Kerwin, and did is he spent time with the All Blacks and interviewed and looked at their coaching philosophy, how the players worked cohesively as a team, and basically pieced together his 15 lessons in leadership. That's a side title here. So what I thought I'd do is just spend a few minutes here reviewing this book, tying it in with how it helps you with respect of your pursuit of health, happiness, and vitality. So this book revolves around the concepts of cohesion and teamwork and culture. Now, I firmly believe you've got to have those things in place for your own health program. Ultimately, you have to lead your own pursuit of health, happiness, and vitality and surround yourself, that is, create this relationship dynamic and cohesion as a team of health professionals around you. That might be books. It might be seeing health professionals, such as myself as a massage therapist. It might be getting testing done. And it might be then seeking out the foods and so on and so forth. The essence of it is this. You have to understand that you know your body and your mind better than any other person out there. So once you take complete accountability and take that leadership role in the fulfillment of your own health, happiness, and vitality, then by virtue, you can be the example that you wish to share with people in the world, whether that's your partner, whether it's your children, whether it's your grandchildren, your siblings, your work colleagues, your friends, uh, it, it, it expands beyond just you. And that's the essence of this truly wonderful text that gets into these 15 leadership lessons. I just thought I'd share two or three with you here right now. One of my favorites was uh, called Sweeping the Sheds. So the All Blacks, after their competitions, wherever they've competed in the world, will take the time, you know, just imagine these huge burly men that just come off of the rugby pitch playing an extensive game for 80 minutes plus, and they come out, they get their showers and change, but they actually leave that venue, and especially their changing room, cleaner than when they arrived. So the essence of that lesson is to leave it better than when you arrived. So I just want you to think about that. How would that apply to your health program? How can you leave it better than when you arrived? So that could even just mean where you're currently at with respect of your health, happiness, vitality, and the scale of that, that's where you're at currently. But you have the goal, perhaps, of moving forward. So you want to leave it better than how it was previously in your own context. Now, naturally, as you do that, what's going to happen is you're going to provide some stepping stones, not just for yourself to realize that you can foster these new habits, but you can also share that as an example and extend it beyond just you. Because if you just keep it focused around yourself, there's only so much you're going to do. As soon as you start to consider others and want to benefit other people, that becomes truly powerful. I certainly speak from this from a point of view of having my own children. The, the ramifications and the turnaround, if you will, in my mindset of, you know, I was speaking yesterday about my sugar addiction, my chocolate addiction in particular. When my first son was born 17 years ago, I really started to think, okay, well, if I continue down this pathway of consuming this volume of chocolate, am I providing that example for my kids? And what's that going to do for his teeth? What's that going to do for his health? And so that for me was a turning point and it motivated me and compelled me to leave it better than when I arrived in the sense of leaving a better example for my son as he grew older and he would not see dad heavily consuming chocolate, for example. Okay, number two, lesson number two is champions do extra. This is straight from this book, champions do extra. 
And I want you to think about how that ties in with what I've been sharing the last few weeks of your four controllables. Your four controllables revolve around your mindset, your physical body, and how you take care of that by way of movement and stretching and mobility. And then also we get into the foods we ingest and the rest and recovery cycles that we should be tying in with helping ourselves get more relief from our stress, tension, and pain. So those are four things that we can directly control. Champions do extra. What's the philosophy behind that? Is what are you prepared to do that pushes you outside of your comfort zone? Right now we're comfortable, but we're only getting so much. If you wanna have a little bit more, what are those 1% changes? We've talked about this before. What are those 1% changes that you can make in each of those areas of your life and that you can fulfill and consistently pursue so that you are doing that extra as champions do by virtue of the New Zealand All Blacks philosophy. Third one is leave the jersey in a better place. Again, this ties in with number one of sweeping the sheds of considering others. You know, leaving the jersey in a better place, what, what he's meaning by that is the eventually the All Blacks, they'll retire and then the next cycle of new players coming through the program will come in and they basically are handing down their jersey and there's a responsibility and an accountability that comes with that. And as they're getting that jersey, it's quite a christening experience by all accounts that they're wanting to leave that jersey in a better place and provide these young men that coming through the program with some shoes to fill, but also have them understand that there's a level of responsibility and ownership and honor in wearing this jersey that they're handing down to them. And it's the same in our regards of our health and happiness and our vitality. Who are we around so much and how are we sharing examples to other people? And we may even be a health practitioner. Are we actually illustrating and demonstrating a good example for our patients, for our clients? Because we can only take them so far. We can only take them as far as we've attained and accomplished ourselves. Leave the jersey in a better place. Number four is better people make better all blacks. And this revolves around that personal development sphere constantly showing and having an interest in pursuing a level of development on the inside, especially from a mindset point of view. <clears throat> Personal development revolves around evolving the capacity of the person that you currently are. And that book we talked about a few weeks ago, Chasing Excellence, it's about changing those things that are well within your control. Here I'm saying your mind, your body, your, your foods, and your rest and recovery. If you develop in those areas better people, as in, as you improve your health, happiness, vitality, make better all blacks. It makes you a better parent. It makes you a better leader in your business. It makes you a better coach in your sports that you might be involved in on a voluntary basis. All round, it helps improve the quality of your life. And number five, the last one I want to leave you with is what's called whack-a-papa. I love that word, whack-a-papa. It's to be a good ancestor, to plant the trees that you will not see grow. Think beyond just yourself, your family, like your immediate family, your children, and think beyond to great grandchildren. What are the fundamentals that you're laying down as foundations for your family, your legacy that you're creating within that family, family context? And how might that pervade the entire root system that can come from that? And that's what the All Blacks have been very successful at doing, which is why James Kerr shares in his book, Legacy, of how they've become the most winningest team in sports history at 86% winning rate. Thank you for joining me. I hope you see the tie-ins between this great book and how this can influence your health, happiness, and vitality. Remember, if you are interested in diving into more steps that I share, go get my free digital book called The 15-Step Playbook for Pain Relief. You can do that from my website, jasonbarlowrmt.com. If you want to have this physical copy, just go to Amazon and plug in the title on Amazon. It's the 15-step playbook for pain relief. Remember, I'm here as your therapist and as your coach. Leave some comments, share this, plug it out, and help me spread this message to other people. And remember, your muscle health is my number one priority. Thank you for joining me. We'll see you again next week.